Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Arif, your cloud learning journey partner. Well, in today's video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna explore AWS Route 53. AWS Route 50 is a service that helps us to configure domain name service. Uh, here's a fun fact why we call it Route 53, why AWS named this service Route 53, because 53 is a port that is used for uh, DNS. And uh, before studying the video, I want to talk about my background. So I do have more than eight years of experience in the cloud and uh, I got more than uh, five certification in uh, AWS. You can see my certification in the background. Uh, so uh, after today's video, you will be able to answer any questions related to Route 53. So without further ado, let's get started. I've logged into my AWS account and from the search menu I'm gonna search for route 53 and uh, I'll click the link so this is the route 53 dashboard so first of all uh, why we need DNS we need to understand that well uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, whenever we visit a website we visit by a specific name for an instance if we want to visit Google we type www.google.com or for Microsoft Microsoft.com so uh, this is the na given name so this is called uh, domain so uh, but in the back end how it works this domain name is also attached with a IP address so whenever we are typing a website name in the back end, this uh, name is uh, uh, transferring the traffic to the do uh, to the IP addresses. So these IP addresses could be the web server's IP address at the back end, or maybe a load balancer IP address. And beside behind this load balancer, there are lots of uh, multiple uh, web servers. So in this way, we are getting our uh, expected result. So this is the dashboard of Route 53. We today will cover a few important points in here. The first one that I want to talk about is registered domains. So under registered domains, we can purchase domain name just like uh, GoDaddy. So from here, we can uh, get our domains if it's available. So if I click register domains and here we can search for our domain names. So I'm going to search for my name are if Dot com and let's see if there are any domain arif.com is not available because it's already taken uh, maybe someone with my same name has already registered this domain so uh, here uh, we can see some similar domain names that are suggested by route 53 console like arif1.com drarif.com so and the prices are very cheap it's like 13 dollar per uh, per year and we can set up the auto renewal so we don't have to worry about tuning it every year so for today's tutorial i'm not gonna uh, buy a new domain because uh, currently i don't need one and i need to be a little bit thoughtful before coming up with a name that i need to purchase the domain all right so uh, the domain uh, purchasing process is very uh, very easy so once uh, we select a domain so for instance if i select this one and then i have to go to uh, go to the proceed to checkout option there i have to fill some more information like uh, this those information will be attached to it this domain name and then finally once uh, i purchase it it will be built under my aws billing console all right this is pretty straightforward uh, i want to leave this section right now the next thing that I'm going to talk about is hosted zone. So this is an interesting one. So suppose you have a domain that is abc.com, but you purchase the domain in another provider, maybe under GoDaddy, you got your domain in that GoDaddy. But now the problem that you're facing is that your uh, web server is uh, deployed in uh, AWS EC2 and uh, you have your whole architecture developed in AWS platform you have the load balancer you have the database and you want to use this that domain abc.com with this uh, architecture so how do we do it so for that what we can do we can create a hosted zone so suppose we already have the domain here we can specify the domain name let's call it abc.com and uh, description it's uh, optional we won't uh, provide any description in here and there are two types of 
hosted zone the first one is the public hosted zone and the second one is the private hosted zone the public hosted zone is that uh, if here you can see the description is that uh, a public hosted zone determines how traffic is routed on the internet and a private hosted zone is uh, determines how traffic is routed within uh, amazon vpc so if you want your architecture confined within a virtual private cloud it's not accessible from the internet then you can purchase this you can sign for this uh, private hosted zone so now um, now i will create the hosted zone so it takes few seconds to create the hosted zone so once i create the hosted zone here i will get two records so one is ns record another is soa record so they are different sort of record set so if i click in here create record and uh, record type so this is very important to understand these different types of records it is uh, a very fundamental thing to understand uh, if you want to be uh, an expert in domain name so the first one is a record so routes the traffic to ipv4 address and some aws sources so if we have uh, a ec2 server we know the ip addresses then we can use the a record to attach the ip address with uh, this domain name that is abc.com the hosted zone and if we have ipv6 addresses for that we have to use uh, uh, this one a a a a record so it is it's used for just only for the ipv6 addresses and the cname cname browse traffic to another domain name and uh, and to some aws resources so cname is more of a like suppose we ha already have a domain name and we need to have a duplicate domain name for that duplicate record then we can use the cname and MX is a specific, it specifies the mail server. If we're dealing with mail server, then MX record is important. And uh, in this way, there are multiple uh, record set. And uh, the one that I explained are the important one to understand. Uh, so for this, so suppose if we want to attach our uh, EC2 server's IP address with uh, this uh, record, then uh, we have to select this one. And here abc.com is counted as a root domain so now we have to come up with some subdomain so maybe i can call it web server dot abc.com so here if i enable the alias so what does it mean so if i enable the alias then it will try to look for endpoints so suppose uh, our application is running in a elastic beanstalk or uh, we do have a network load balancer or classic load balancer and we want to add those uh, services with this uh, subdomain then we can do it if we don't have a specific ip address but if we have the ip address then we can just uh, put a value or something like that in here and the next important thing to understand is the ttl so ttl stands for time to leave so when we create a record set and uh, uh, if i add a web server's ip address in here this web server ip address will be bind binded to this uh, subdomain and this ttl defines that after how free, um, long this will be refreshed so it determines the frequency if i put ttl is 300 seconds so after every 300 seconds it will be refreshed so ttl is very important so if the ttl is long and you have created a record and now you want to change the value so if you put a ttl maybe for five hours then before the five hours the refresh won't take place and you have to wait to uh, get the new update information from this uh, webserver.abc.com subdomain and we also have some very important uh, routing policies in here so simple routing is uh, as you uh, as you can understand from the name is uh, just uh, simply routing the traffic there is no uh, other component so weighted so suppose we have multiple web servers and we want to have uh, share the load so under the weighted we can uh, uh, 
define maybe 60% or 40% of the traffic will be served from that one server and uh, from another server the rest of it will be served so you, this is how we can distribute the traffic uh, then the geolocation suppose you have an application then this application is uh, pretty popular uh, people from all around the world is uh, using the application and uh, you want to serve the application geolocation basis so in this way the application will be faster then you have to use this one and in this way we can uh, look into some other components but the one that i covered are the most important one so once we configure all of it so for the sake of the video i'm gonna put a random ip in here and i will create a record great so now here we can see now we have webserve abc.com it is a a record and this is the value and the ttl is this uh, this is the ttl value so once we have this uh, configuration the next question should be how can we uh, make sure that this uh, hosted zone this uh, abc.com hosted zone is attached to our root domain that is uh, inside the godaddy account for that we need to do a very simple thing that is we need to copy these uh, values from the ns type and we have to go to our GoDaddy account from there we need to update the NS record with this value once we do it then uh, we have successfully made a connection and all the records that we'll put in here maybe we'll create more and more uh, um, a records or different sort of records all record will be uh, served by the domain one more important thing to uh, cover before uh, finishing the video is that the health checks it's a very crucial so we need really need to know like how uh, our application uh, is performing whether it's any downtime or anything some, something like that for that we can use this service so uh, this availability and morning uh, performance monitoring it will uh, ping our server after a particular time and it will make sure that our server is accessible and uh, it it will uh, give us the uh, uh, health pass signals so that's a very quick uh, introduction of Route 53. I have tried to cover the uh, important topics related to Route 53. Uh, if you have any questions or any sort of uh, queries related to Route 53, any AWS service, any cloud related questions, please feel free to let me know. And uh, uh, you can send me a message under this comment section and I will answer you back real quick. If you want me to cover any specific topic related to AWS, please let me know under the comment section and uh, I'll definitely cover it in my next videos. Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel for watching these sort of videos and I'm planning to upload videos very frequently and uh, I just want to share my knowledge that I have gathered throughout uh, my experience all of this year. So that's all for today. Thank you so much.